Good morning, everybody. Um, thanks for, for joining us today. Um, for those of you who don't know me, uh, this is Justin Krentz. I'm, I'm an account manager here with uh, Vertical Solutions. Um, you know, and as a managed IT services provider and an ERP consultancy, we're, we're constantly looking for solutions that can help better accommodate um, clients or, or prospects um, in their processes, you know, whether that be productivity, communication, collaboration. Uh, and given that the, the work from home model um, seems to be the new norm rather than a, a temporary solution, you know, it really becomes more, port, more pertinent now uh, than, than ever. So, um, you know, with that, we're excited to have Mike uh, Marson from Dynamic Point with us today uh, to expand you know, on our previous Office 365 webinar series, uh, really to, to showcase their invoice automation solution and provide some additional Office 360 fun 365 functionality. Uh, so with that, I will uh, turn things over to Mike. Thank you so much, Justin, for the introduction. Um, and we'll get started. Uh, just a little bit of housekeeping. Feel free to chat any questions. I'll do my best to keep an eye out on that. Um, second part, I know we have this uh, scheduled for an hour. We're going to do our best to get through it early um, such that everyone has more time back in their day. So we put that out there just in case there was any questions or guys wanted to stay on longer. Um, so we're in no rush, but we'll try to get everyone out of here in a um, you know, shoot for half an hour or just over that. So today we're talking about AP automation, specifically with Office 365 as being our uh, backbone or the foundation of what we're going to showcase today on how you could do that, uh, automate that process using Office 365. So as far as the uh, agenda for today, we're going to go through basically all steps of the AP automation. We're going to create a check request for invoice submission. We're going to look at processing of invoices with or without a PO. So some with a PO, some without a PO, and then those with a PO, we're going to look both at the three-way match scenario in which there's a goods receipt as well as an invoice, um, and then the two-way match where there's not a separate goods receipt and just an invoice has been received after the PO. So we'll be looking at how that's managed, as well as how workflow uh, can be leveraged using Power Automate. Um, for those of you who have used this tool for a while, it was previously called Flow. Sometimes you'll catch me still say Flow, so. Uh, but now it's called Power Automate, which is the workflow engine provided by Microsoft, included with Office 365, I should say. And I should actually make that distinction now, as everything we're talking about is typically included with someone's Office 365 subscription. So we're not really adding uh, anything from an Office 365 licensing that you wouldn't already have. We're just leveraging what um, typically comes with your license. And then lastly, we're gonna be looking at the integration with Dynamics. And I'm assuming there's people using various versions of Dynamics, whether it be BCFO um, or you know, GP or NAV. Uh, today we'll happen to show the integration with GP, but note that our application does integrate with all of the Office 365, I'm sorry, Dynamics 365 products. As far as our application lineup, uh, we do have a portal product as well as a invoice automation. And then lastly, an expense product. Uh, not to go into these uh, in detail here because we are focused on the center one, specifically the AP automation um, being the focus of today, our Easy AP 365 product. So that will be our focus for today. As far as our approach and just how we're a little bit different than other companies out there, um, the best analogy that I've been able to come up with over the years is this idea of uh, an app on a mobile phone, right? And that's something we're obviously all very familiar with. When I install an application on my mobile phone, the first thing it asks me is, can I use all these things that the mobile phone provides? Can I use location services? Can I use the camera? Can I use notifications? Whatever it is that that application is leveraging as part of the platform. Well, us as a company, we do that same thing. I mean, for all intents and purposes, we are an app. Uh, we are an app in an Office 365 platform, as opposed to obviously leveraging an Apple, uh, you know, an iPhone or an Android. It's a Microsoft ecosystem, and it's obviously specific to businesses as opposed to personal phones. So the way that works in practicality is our products you know, are obviously developed by us and we're adding very specific functions when it comes to that process for invoice automation. And they're deployed to a SharePoint front end as an app, which is providing us the security, branding, document management, and the framework. 
As I mentioned previously, when it comes to workflow, we're leveraging this tool by the name of Power Automate, which is providing the workflow triggers, integration with other systems, etc. When it comes to mobility, um, such things as submitting a check request um, or other uses when it comes to invoice automation, we're using a tool by the name of Power Apps. And when it comes to capturing additional details, such things as like vendor onboarding, we're using a tool by the name of Forms. And then last but not least, when it comes to analytics, we're using a tool by the name of Power BI. So all of these are applications that come with most Office 365 subscriptions. And again, we are gonna leverage all of those to the utmost of their capability to make our product um, that much more powerful and functional, and hopefully at a fraction of cost because we're not building all this, we're leveraging all of these features that are being provided by this platform. So on to the world of invoice automation. So that was just an introduction of uh, who we are and what it is that we do. Now let's specifically talk about invoice automation. And I you know, want to be frank, and what I'm going to go through here, you know, there's certain aspects that are going to leverage our product. But even if you don't want to use our product, that's fine. Um, a lot of what I will showcase today is just using Office 365 out-of-the-box functionality. Um, if you have no desire to buy our product, you know, that's obviously fine. Um, you can hopefully get something out of this for the sake of what can I do just with Office 365 um, such that I could, you know, leverage my investment in something that most of our customers already own. And if you don't own it, you know, it's not prohibitively expensive. We're talking typically like $8 a month per user um, for a typical subscription, if you will. Obviously, you could pay more and less and whatever, uh, but generally speaking, it's in that $8 to $10 range. So now let's talk about invoice automation. Invoice automation typically comes down to three major steps, if you will. And the first is receiving that invoice. This whole step here is really just leveraging Office 365, nothing to do with our product really. And um, what it does is ultimately we wanna capture this invoice in a library that has been configured using SharePoint. So we're gonna capture that email and depending on our, I'm sorry, not email, we're gonna capture that invoice and depending on how our vendors wanna submit it, we'll determine how we're gonna capture that, right? So if it's coming in via email, like a shared inbox, you know, accounts payable at dynamicpoint.com, if it's coming in via check requests, this is typically where managers are submitting uh, the invoice and it's more of a distributed buying environment where the invoice is actually coming directly to someone in the field. Maybe a mobile upload, maybe a web portal where I want my um, vendors to submit the invoice. Really, at the end of the day, it doesn't matter. Maybe it's coming in via, you know, scan or fax, um, paper, etc. Ultimately, where it's going to end up is in this library. That is the Manila folder, if you will, of the physical world, where all these invoices are coming into the system and are going to be ultimately staged for me to process them, which prepares us for this next step, which is um, maybe rightfully called processing. And this is where now that I have the invoice, we're going to do all kinds of things to it. We're going to perform workflow on it and route it for approval. Uh, at this point, we're also going to bring it to our application and start assigning um, vendors and GL accounts and things of that nature. We're going to perform OCR on this invoice to capture any of the details that have been submitted, et cetera. So really this is after I get an invoice, what is it that I need to do to prepare it for the third and final step? And that's going to be bringing it into the ERP system for payment. So the end of our process here is ultimately bringing that invoice in such that it could be paid, right? So we're taking this uh, initial process of invoice receipt, writing for approval, potentially coding of that to various GLs or dimensions if you're using um, Business Central. And then the last and final step is bringing that in such that it can be posted and paid. So those are the steps that we will walk through uh, today on our demo. So let me get rid of my drawings here and we'll go out of that and into um, an Office 365 site. So here I have an Office 365 site that has been configured for AP processing. And the target audience for this you know, it's really just a SharePoint page for all intents and purposes. It's serving as a dashboard for all things AP invoice. 
Um, but for you know the techies on the call, it's really nothing more than a SharePoint site where our app has been deployed. And um, the various you know images that I have configured here, of course, are all you know customizable. This is something that gets deployed to your Office 365 tenant. But the images I have are configured to mirror those three steps that I just talked about. Right. So here's the first step: invoices coming into the system. Here's the second step being processing, and here's the third step, which is really nothing more than a link to the GP uh, web client, such that we could see the invoices after they have been integrated. So all of that look and feel, of course, is up to you. Again, all of the data is residing in Office 365, so I could begin building Power BI reports, including those on the dashboard, you know, put, such things as unapproved invoices or an aging of invoices that are in the system or any reports that you really want um, such that they could be uh, displayed on this dashboard. So who is this dashboard for? Um, this dashboard is really for people in AP being the primary audience, but also people maybe who are submitting these invoices or those approving it, such things as managers or supervisors in the field who may be interested in obtaining a status of where the invoice is in the review and in the approval process. So with no further ado, let's go ahead and go into that first step, which is receiving the invoice. And this is really nothing more than a SharePoint library that I have configured. And when I say configured, I really just titled it received invoices and set up various columns that you can see uh, of the information that I'm trying to capture on my invoice. So as you can see, it's empty. Uh, I do have one folder in here uploaded from Teams. I will show you that capability in a second. Um, but for kicking this off, we want to get an invoice from a vendor. And the typical way to do that, or maybe a common way, is submitting it via email. So I have an email here uh, being sent from myself to apautomation at dynamicpoint.com. And it contains my invoice for the Acme Corporation for $110. See, it has a date, it has a number, obviously a few line items, pretty standard invoice. And I'm gonna click the send button. And then I have to wait a couple of seconds here. Um, so we'll take a couple seconds, not that you would ever be waiting for this, but I like to show everyone all the steps and I can hit refresh and lo and behold, my invoice is there. So I now see it in the library and I can hit refresh one more time. So what you can see has been captured already, of course, the image, right? So I showed everyone the image. That's the invoice that was submitted just from the email. In addition, you can see what's been captured is some of the metadata about the invoice. And in this case, it's pretty basic, right? I have the sender of it. So that's sort of a obvious one, right? Uh, I was able to capture the sender as well as uh, such things as the company that that's associated to. And then lastly, you see the subject. If you also know, there's a couple columns here that are blank. And what's going on in the background process, um, which sometimes happen rather instantaneously, sometimes it takes a minute or two, is it's been submitted to OCR. And what that means is I have an OCR process configured for this document library. So anything that is received into it um, will be submitted to OCR and the results of those will be returned to this library. So if I time this just right, you will see the results of that return. And Voila. Okay, so I refreshed, and now you can see the return, the results of the OCR. So now I have an invoice number and an amount. It's actually only going to be there for a brief second. So as I mentioned, this library is really just a collection device um, for invoices coming into the system. So if I refresh, it's going to be actually out of that library and on to the next step, which is processing. So um, all of this, by the way, is you know, me showing you the steps such that you could have an understanding of how we're using Office 365. No one in their right mind is coming in here refreshing, waiting for this to occur. This is just me showing you the various steps. Uh, I have a question, is there a workflow available to route approvals if needed? Absolutely, and I will show that to you uh, in a minute. Right now, we're just gonna focus on that first step, which is the um, submission of it. 
and then we will um, start talking about the workflow um, review and approval. Okay, so before we go on to that processing step, let's talk about other ways you know I could get these invoices from vendors. Because again, at the end of the day, this is just a document library. And for those of you who are familiar with SharePoint document libraries, um, you know, there's a thousand ways, if you will, to skin this cat, right? Like uh, I could drag and drop an invoice. So if I were just go like this and put an invoice in there, um, voila, I have an invoice. I could obviously scan to this library if I had a scanner. I could give my vendors a form, say, hey, vendors, we want you to submit all your invoices on this form that's maybe on our website. So we'll go ahead and again do that and say, please pay ASAP. Not that a vendor would ever tell us that, but we'll be a little feisty. By me clicking cement, you guys could probably already guess where this invoice is going to go. It's going to go into that library. And that was the one I just dragged and dropped. If I hit refresh again, I could see I have received yet another invoice. But in this case, as you notice, I'm capturing a little bit more details. I'm capturing details based off of the submission um, of that form. So depending on how this invoice is coming in, I could obviously capture additional details about it. So, other ways, so those are, you know, anticipating this centralized process where all the invoices are sort of coming into AP, right? But that's not the way every organization works. Sometimes managers get the invoices. So I'm going to share my phone. Everyone keep your fingers crossed that I don't get any embarrassing text or anything. And we're going to talk about managers submitting it. Managers maybe are, you know, back in the day more on the road or <laughs> not that we're doing a lot of traveling these days, but they would want to submit it, you know, not from a scanner because they didn't have one handy. So they wanted to use something like OneDrive or an app on their phone to submit this invoice. So I'm going to go ahead and open up this app. This app again is just provided by Microsoft, nothing that we're quote unquote selling you or anything. And I could scan an invoice. Lo and behold, I have one here sitting on my desk. I have to get my lap in the picture and we'll go ahead and take a picture of that. By doing this, um, it's capturing various details you can see here of the invoice. And if I hit save, come back and again hit refresh, I will anticipate a third invoice of the one I just took a picture of. So where does this come into play? Like I said, more of a distributed buying environment, um, people out in the field submitting invoices, maybe contractors, maybe employees, maybe managers. We had sort of an interesting uh, use case for a customer that happened to be a farm. And you know people are buying fertilizer and things like that for the farm and they wanted to submit it via a mobile app from their truck because uh, that's where all the purchases were actually taking place. In that case, we developed a little Power App for them. Power App uh, allows you to do a little bit more flexible things, such as pick drop downs, which in their world, you know, all these drop downs ultimately map to dimensions in Business Central. You could do the same thing with segments in GP. And they would put in the various fields and then again attach the file, which would be the picture. So they would be doing this from their truck or wherever they were buying such things for the farm and then submitting it. And then again, by submitting this and saving this, I'm going to go ahead and capture that metadata in the library. So point of all this being is that, you know, you are now um, allowed to do various, capture various things that are ultimately going to be put in this library. OCR is one method, as I showed you, uh, but there's different ways a, um, you could capture metadata. So I'll take a quick pause before going to the next step just to look at other questions. Pricing uh, for the products we're demonstrating are all on our website. So if you go to dynamicpoint.com and you go to our EZAP product, you will see on the left-hand side product pricing. So you guys could go look at that. Is SharePoint a requirement or do we have to have another path to EZAP without SharePoint? So we are an app in an Office 365 system. And I say Office 365, we also support on-premise. Um, so without Office 365 or SharePoint, our app is doesn't have a home. 
if I asking if I can install Google Maps uh, without an iPhone, it's very much a prerequisite. Okay, so again, taking us down this journey, we were on this first step, if you will, of, uh, oops, that's not the slide I wanted to share, um, of this one, of uh, capturing the invoice, and we talked about the various methods, and now we're gonna move on to the second step, which is processing of the invoices. The processing of the invoices did come into our application. So now you're gonna see sort of what our app adds to this picture um, where everything else has been, generally speaking, this Office 365 technology. And what our application is gonna to add to this picture is specifically the integration with ERP information, right? Everything that you see me doing as far as a capture, um, capturing various metadata, I haven't really been too concerned with what that means from an invoice ultimately entered into Dynamics. And that's what the app is going to add, is the integration with Dynamics. So if I open up the invoices, so these are the invoices that just came from the emails. So you can see those are the ones that were all created. The date came from the OCR process that recognized the date as well as the amount on the invoice. So that's where that came from. The vendor came from the submitter, right? I submitted it from my dynamic point email, so I knew to assign the vendor. And then here I have an account allocation. So this would be a non-PO invoice. And ultimately what I'm doing is allocating it to accounts, right? Because ultimately this has to be assigned to some GL accounts within the system. So how did that happen? In this case, that happened via what we call a template. Um, a template was applied based off of my vendor that added these GL accounts. As I mentioned, today's demo is on GP. If you watch when I change these various fields, the account will update. So these are mapped to segments in GP. If you're a you know, business central user or something else, they would be dimensions as opposed to account segments. So do I have to have a template? The answer is absolutely not. The purpose of the template is really just to uh, show any or default any fields that I can based on anything that was captured when the invoice was submitted, such as the vendor. I could obviously add new allocations, I could change my percentages, etc. From here, I could obviously go into that invoice that was submitted. As you can see here, I am getting a warning saying it is a duplicate. So we are validating this invoice against the information that does exist in the ERP product saying, a nice try, but this invoice number already exists. So what I'm gonna do is just make it unique and trick it. And then I'm gonna update the date because I happen to know that 2018 is closed from a financial period. Of course, I could change any of these things and I am going to update it and then submit it for review. So workflow is going to kick off. I have a workflow configured for review and approval. The workflow is successfully started. If this was a PO invoice, as opposed to adding those allocation items, I would have added PO items. The PO items are being queried directly from um, Dynamics, right? So we are not quote unquote storing POs, we are querying those in a real time fashion such that they could be added to the invoice and then ultimately it's going to be kicked off for review and approval. So that is what a non or a PO match looks like. Um, we're going to follow our non-PO through the sake of um, keeping this on time. So I'm going to go to my email as my demo account. And what you're going to see here is I have a new invoice that has been submitted for review and approval. And I could uh, obviously include details on this email notification as well as the attachment itself. Um, but what I have is a link. And the reason I have it is a link because I want reviewers to have edit rights to the invoice. In other words, my reviewers are going to be um, part of the account assignment process. So I want to bring them back to that invoice in the application um, such that I can edit it. Oops. There we go. So here's the review page that I link the uh, reviewer to. And as you can see, they could edit this. And then by giving them the capability to edit this, they could go in there and 
assign such things as cost centers and expense types, et cetera. So I have them being part of the review, uh, actively involved in editing this. Of course, the reviewers could see the attachment and the other thing that is forming is an audit log of each step in the workflow process that has occurred so far. So these are each of the steps. And as it continues to go through workflow, we will build that audit log of each step in the workflow. You also see a view notes. Um, my notes are not very interesting because I am the first reviewer. So there's not too much to look at from a notes perspective yet. So that one I initiated from an email. Given that we're using this Microsoft landscape, this task has been assigned by Power Automate or Flow. And Microsoft gives us all kinds of ways to review and approve this. So I could actually go to Teams if you guys are using Teams. And all of the workflow items um, that have been assigned to me using Power Automate will also be available here. So if I don't want to manage that workflow task list of all the invoices I have to review and approve using email, I could use Teams. And again, I have a link to review or approve as well as drop down to approve or reject or reassign this. There is also a mobile app. Again, we're probably not doing a ton of traveling like we used to, um, but if that was pertinent to a post-COVID environment um, or just for the sake of people like using their mobile phone, uh, we do, um, or I should say we do, Microsoft offers a Power Automate uh, app that allows me to manage all my review and approvals directly from my phone as well. So again, I could link to it, click approve or reject or reassign directly from a mobile app. So various different ways to review and approve, really it's a personal preference, it's up to you. So I'm gonna go ahead and say approve and say, this looks great. Dun, dun, dun. And confirm it. And I'll just do it from Teams just because I have it open. So we'll get rid of Teams. We'll get rid of my email. That is the invoice that is currently under review. If I go ahead and refresh my page here. You have noticed that invoice is actually gone and it's not really gone, it's just out of my view. So I'm gonna clear my filter that I have here and um, look at the invoice that is now in a new status of submitted. And what submitted means is basically it's been integrated with the ERP application. So let's look at what's going on with that invoice now, right? So I could see here my notes tab is populated with all of the reviewer's notes. I have an audit that is now showing each step in the workflow process. I now have a permission tab. Permissions are an interesting thing. So submitters of invoices have access to them as well as anyone involved in the review process. And then of course, managers and our admins and things like that from AP. So the list of invoices that I see in this dashboard is really dynamic based on who I am because we are using permissions on each of those. Um, and then we will go to the last tab, which is the ERP details. This is showing me the transaction that I just created. And as I mentioned, this one happens to be going into GP. If I was doing a demo with Business Central, that would say BC, um, and it would give me a transaction that was created. So we're gonna go look at that transaction. I do have one other question. Can workflow items be processed by people who use other types of email, such as Gmail? Absolutely. Um, the one thing that Microsoft gives you as part of their Outlook um, is these, you know, actions, if you will, as far as approve, or, oops, I'm sorry, that's not my email. Um, these actions as far as approve and rejecting things, um, that would not be available if you're using such things as Gmail. Um, that is an Outlook specific function. That being said, you could do those as hyperlinks, something like that, that would be more supported on you know any type of email so no there's no requirement to use outlook it comes with office 365 so that's what i happen to be showing all right so let's go back to the integration we'll go ahead and copy that transaction just so i have it in my clipboard we're going to go ahead and open up uh, gp for the sake of our demo and i'm going to paste it 
And this is the invoice that we have just created in a real-time fashion, right? So upon the final step in the workflow, which mine is a pretty doggone simple um, workflow, right? In other words, it was only a one-step approval, just for the sake of not putting everyone to sleep. You can have as many steps in that workflow as you want. And it created this transaction as well as passed the distributions um, from the application. So someone just asked, can I see those distributions in the application? Yes, those were the items that I had as allocation items initially, right? So that's where those came from because I, in this one, I only had one. Obviously I can multiple uh, assign it to multiple GLs, but that's where those assignments came from is we pass those, you know, those could have come from templates. Those could have come from the review process and people picking various fields, et cetera. But however that information was captured, it ultimately mapped to a GL account. And then that is what we um, put into the account when the invoice was created. The other thing we are providing is a drill back. Uh, so if I go to the, to the additional tab here and click the link, we could either drill back to the whole review page so you could see audits and things like that. Uh, in this case, it's just gonna drill back to the invoice itself. So you can see either the attachment uh, or the full um, review page with the audits, et cetera. So let's see, we'll go ahead and close out of GP. We'll go back to our slide. And just to recap where we've been, we went through the receipts, talked about the various things. We talked about workflow, uh, OCR, as well as assigning accounts as part of processing. And then that last step was bringing it into the ERP product. The one I showed you was a non-PO invoice. If it was a PO invoice, of course, it would have created a different transaction. So um, note that, that I only walked through one example there of a non-PO integration. Moving forward, um, what's the goal here? The goal here is that we're leveraging what you know people are investing in in Office 365 technology. So if you look at all the aspects of a uh, invoice automation, there's the ERP integration, there's the invoice repository, there's workflow, there's OCR, all these various components. We, as a app manufacturer in this ecosystem, are really focused on one part of that. The rest of this is being provided by your Office 365 investment. So the hope of all this is that we are going to deliver you a product that offers the functionality of, you know, any of the quote unquote enterprise applications, but we didn't have to develop all of that because it is coming from um, that Office 365 ecosystem where our app resides. So let's see, we have a few more. Um, uh, regarding integration with other products, um, so if you are using another ERP application, um, you know, there's no necessity to use the dynamic suite that I'm showing you today. We do have integrations with various other ERP products, as well as some other ERP products, more of the, you know, maybe smaller or older ones don't even offer uh, application program interfaces or APIs. So there is the option to do an export file and an import. Obviously, our goal there is a real-time integration. It's just cleaner and more automated, um, but you can most certainly um, do an export file if that's your preference, or we do integrate with other ERP systems, including various you know, applications from SAP, uh, Oracle, NetSuite, et cetera. Just a few of our customers that are using our application sort of our brag sheet, I suppose, there of, you know, some of the organizations that have uh, used our application or continue to use our application, I should say. Um, and that was it from the demo as well as the webinar. So I believe I've covered all steps there. Um, I have a couple more questions here. If anyone wants to go ahead and chat anything, please feel free to do so. Otherwise, I'll answer the questions. Um, ERP requires you to copy the transaction from, um, no, the ERP integration, I didn't actually copy and paste that transaction. What I did was just get the 
number so I could look it up faster. So this was automatically created using the web services provided by GP in this case in a real time fashion. So I didn't really copy and paste a transaction per se. I just did the number so I didn't have to look it up. Otherwise you guys would see me scrolling through this long list of all the transactions that was created and I didn't think anyone wanted to see that. So I actually just, you know, pasted the numbers so I could look it up. But the transaction was created in a real time fashion. Uh, are all the features today I'm showing in the basic? Um, for the most part, yes. And they're referring to the pricing of basic. Um, when you get into the professional, it's usually we're doing more advanced things such as complex workflow. Um, with this tool, you know, I obviously don't have time today to talk about the whole power of Power Automate. Um, the best thing I can do is sort of show you the connectors and then, uh, yeah, I'm sorry, Power Automate connectors. So there are so many things that we could do with this Office 365 ecosystem, given you know, that we're using the workflow provided by this Power Automate or Flow. So this is just a list of connectors that Microsoft has, right? So it could send a text notification, uh, it could, you know, integrate with reporting, it could, you know, tweet that I have an invoice approved. I don't know why I'd want to do that, but of course that's a silly example. Um, so there's all these various plugins that I could do with the workflow engine we're, we're doing. Uh, sake of example, I had a customer on the other day, you know, who said they wanted to um, call their phone every they had time they had a new invoice to review and approve um, because they don't check their email that often. And it's like, sure enough, there's a task in here to call a cell phone. So <laughs> um, I said, sure, if you wanted to call your phone every time you have something, that's an option that we could do with this workflow engine that's provided by Microsoft. That's obviously one extreme. Uh, other things, you know, such as storing that document in, you know, another document management system, such as like OnBase, that has been asked of me. And sure enough, there's connectors such that we could put that invoice document in a shared drive and, you know, other document management system, etc. cetera. So um, DocuSign we use quite a bit for such things as vendor onboarding. Uh, I didn't go that into that today, but you could automate vendor onboarding using Office 365, such as the collection of W9s. Uh, and things of that nature. And DocuSign provides a lot of functionality as far as um, your capability of obtaining electronic signatures as well as government forms such as the W9. So it, it provides us a plethora of flexibility that I can't unfortunately cover in the time we have today, but there's so many options I you know, could spend days talking about it. But. Um, let's see. Uh, can the invoice image be seen in other areas of uh, GP or basically the ERP? Um, the answer is yes, right? So really, if you think about it, the only thing that quote unquote got passed is a hyperlink. Um, so this is really just a hyperlink to that attachment um, in SharePoint. Um, someone asked, can we pass the attachment? Yes. The attachment itself can be passed as well. Um, so if you wanted to pass the whole attachment as opposed to just the hyperlink, you could do that. The trade-offs, if you will, or the considerations is, is it do, I just want to drill back to the attachment, or if you recall that review page that I showed you, which I don't think I have it up anymore. Let's see. The review page gives you a lot more information, right? If I were the other option that I mentioned from a drillback perspective is we can take people to this. And what this page gives us is a full list of the audits, um, the notes, et cetera, as well as the attachments. So sometimes the attachments is just not enough, right? It's just the image and someone drilling back from Dynamics or any uh, ERP product um, wants to see you know, more of the details of the workflow and who reviewed it and approved it. And that's really what this uh, page provides us is links to all of that information. So that is an option as well. Um, I believe that is it as far as the questions. So I will wrap it up unless uh, Justin or Tina have anything to add otherwise. We will call it. Uh, we will um, submit this. Uh, I should mention we will go ahead and send this recording out to everyone as well. And uh, please let us know if you have any questions.
So. Yeah, Mike, uh, re really appreciate you taking the time this morning. Uh, thanks, thanks again for that. And you know, as you mentioned, we'll be sharing out the recording. And if there's any further questions, uh, please don't hesitate to reach out. We'd be happy to answer those. Thank you, everyone, for your time. Have a great day. Stay safe and enjoy the rest of your summer. Bye now.